If you think about it, really what we're doing right now is we're training the next generation of heroes in our in our community. We're, these kids will be patrolling our streets in the next few years. They'll be putting out the fires in our next few years. They'll be driving ambulances, answering your 911 calls in the next few years. We want our students to understand what the scope and responsibilities are of the other disciplines within the simulation and also learn how to develop that collegial relationship within the discipline so that they can communicate better. We look at student surveys, employer surveys, and our alumni surveys and all of that data is used to determine what we should um, plan and what we should add into our curriculum for our simulations for the upcoming year and that's done every simulation that we do. Moulage is basically with the medical makeup like the Hollywood style makeup that you see. Uh, we would do that to our patients, um, get them ready, stage them and whatever if we had gunshot wounds or a car crash or pregnancy. Um, really any medical trauma type uh, situation you could think of, we could um, simulate it and put our paramedics to that program. Lay down on the ground, do it now! We'll have the Law Enforcement Academy They'll do their scene safety, they'll secure weapons, whatever the simulation is. They'll call in the fire department, so now they have to communicate uh, with the fire department students. Uh, those students come in, they'll do their job. Um, in the sim we did, they had to extricate uh, four patients, which they had to cut the roof off a car. Um, after that, they had to call in the EMT paramedic program and talk with them, communicate their issue. And then um, the paramedics would take care of the patients the way they were trained with the EMTs. Then they would transfer them into the nursing students and then do a handoff and communicate with the nursing students and then the nursing students would take care of them. We collaborate within the disciplines and then ultimately the patients were transferred to our nursing labs and our nursing students took care of them in a virtual ER. In the real world you'll see firefighters, law enforcement and EMS all at the same scene but when they train a lot of times they just train individually and not together. There is a ton of research and literature out there that shows the benefits to the students both clinically and collaboratively. What we know is that patient care is improved and outcomes are better when we conduct simulations. So when we do goals for the simulation is to give them actual real world experience. Simulation helps them to do some critical thinking. It helps them to decide what they want to do whether right or wrong at the time of their training and to put into action whatever plan they come up with. They shot me, man! Turn off. Our goal is to give them some experience before they actually touch a live patient. All students that aren't actively participating get to watch. So the nursing students were able to see what exactly the fire uh, fighters were doing, uh, the EMTs and then, uh, the law enforcement, because they don't traditionally you know they're in a hospital or a fixed facility so they don't get to see that. We do already have simulations planned where we believe we can incorporate all six of the allied health professions that will be in the interdisciplinary center. I could start with a patient in our medical assisting office that has an abnormal lab draw. They may need transporting into the hospital from our EMT and paramedic students. While they're there, nursing would take care of them. We would also have our pharmacy technology students help prepare and stock medication charts. And then our surgical technician program, they would also be able to take care of the patients if they would need um, OR services. Uh, the last discipline that is there is our dental assisting program and within that program we also do interdisciplinary simulation. We simulate medical emergencies in the dental chair and are able to transfer those dental patients to the simulated ER for care. And we wanted to deliberately make this not a one discipline building. We wanted to build it so other disciplines can use it. So there's a, a lot of nursing spaces the medical assistant can use it, the pharmacy, EMT, paramedic. So we deliberately designed it so all disciplines can use the whole building. After the simulation is done, we have a debrief method that we use here, which is debriefing for meaningful learning. And we debrief the medics from everything of what they were told about the patient, uh, how their priorities were set, and then we discuss all the outcomes. Well, was this a positive when you gave this medication? Was it a positive outcome or negative? So our goal is just to bring awareness. So to know that, hey, this is what you do. Um, this is your particular job, but you're not alone. You have to communicate with your um, partners. And just for them to see, hey, my mistake or my positive thing actually made a difference and I could see how 
with what I did well made the, let's say the nursing student's job easy or what I did poor made their job hard. We are submitting our application to receive provisional accreditation to the Society for Simulation and Healthcare. And it's a stamp of approval on our simulation practices here at PPCC that not only are we doing the things that we know are good for our students, but we're doing them the right way.